Hi, I'm Jeannie Rozier Smith. Welcome back. This is my second lesson on painting seascapes. Today we're going to paint the shoreline, which means waves coming onto the shore. So it's a little bit more complex than just the simple anatomy of the wave. So you have the color, you always have the color of the water, which in the Atlantic is often green. Then you also want to be looking for the color that is that the water is reflecting. And if, if the water is facing up, you have that, that would be the color of the sky. Sometimes you also have the, the light source that the water is reflecting. So you would see, you would actually see little sparkles on the water depending on the time of day. So that would be the light source would be the sun. And then you also, depending on the location, you can often see whatever is through the water. You can, you can see through the water because it's translucent. So you can, so for instance, in the front here, you can see the sand through the water. So you've got at least four colors that you're looking for. The light source, whatever the water is reflecting, the color of the water itself, and whatever you can see through the water. The underpainting for me is probably the most important part of my painting. And if I get it right, the rest of the painting is just a piece of cake. It's so much easier and it's a joy to paint if I get the underpainting right. So, and I, I try to remember to take my time here and really go and turn it into a painting of sorts. It's, it helps set me up for success for the rest of the painting. And so what I try to remember here is that I do have time to go, go in and make adjustments and lift things out if needed because this is rubbing alcohol and it will, it, it, it's like creating a watercolor painting. This is, I'm using the 70% isopropyl alcohol. I like using this. There's a lot of other ways you can do an underpainting and they, and they will all work with this technique. You can use uh, turpenoid to dissolve this pastel. You can even do this technique with a, a light oil underpainting or with watercolor. It, all of this, this idea will work with, with other media. I like the alcohol because it dries really quickly and it dissolves the pastel really easily. All right, now look, I'm seeing that that's darker than I wanted it to be. That's supposed to be this area here, and it's darker than I want. So first thing I'm gonna do is try to, before once it dries, you're stuck with whatever the value is, and I really want this area to be lighter. So first thing I'm gonna do is go in and try to lighten that particular area a little bit, just by lifting it up. And then my next plan is just is to, uh, Anywhere that I've put that similar color on, I can actually go in with a dry brush and brush off a little bit of the, the pigment that's on there. Because it's the, the I like the color, but the value is just a little bit darker than I want. Another thing you want to be paying attention to is, in, along the same vein, is the edges of the foam. So over here, this this wave or this foam in the front here is being pushed forward because you can see it's surging, it's got shadows, it's actually sitting with a decent amount of volume on the, on the uh, sand, so it's coming forward. And then usually there are other parts of the wave where it's coming back or it's sinking into the water. So you really want to pay attention to that. It's usually not consistent all over the whole, um, the whole area. There's going to be some areas where it's a little bit flatter than others, where it's, it's not being pushed forward with the same amount of force. So you do not want to make your wave equally consistently pushing forward all over the entire surface. What's going on here is you've got this, it's sunk in a little bit more here, but you see, remember how I said that this was a more recent wave over here? This, you've got all this thick foam right here. So here you've got the, the wave has receded right here and there's it's it's receded more recently here than it has here. So because of that this this sand is deeper red, it's drier and this sand over here is wetter. And because it's wetter, it's got more water sitting on top of the, the sand. So it's reflecting more of the sky, so it's a little bit purple. very subtly brush it on there, just a little bit of it.